Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I got a secretary desk here with me and I'm going to give it a very nice and artistic layered makeover. When I bought this piece, I was told that this desk is from the early 80s and it actually does scream 80s when you look at it. Uh, I think it has great potential, but I definitely have to bring it to 2022 uh, and that's what I love to do. So I am going to uh, prepare this piece. There is nothing special going about uh, preparation. I'm just going to clean it, remove the hardware, fill up the holes. I will do that off the camera because there is nothing uh, special about prepping this piece. Uh, actually, it's in great conditions, so it's going to be beautiful once I'm done with it. How do you say this word? Honfleur. Ah, huh? honfleur. <laughs> honfleur? Honfleur? Honfleur. Can I say it like Serbian? Honfleur. The piece is uh, clean, all prepared and I can start my project. I'm going to use Annie Sloan Hon Floor and a medium brush. I'm going to uh, cover this desk in this color. This is going to be my base color. Uh, later on, I'm going to do something on top of it, but for now, we're going to start with this. I'm going to paint in every which direction, and then I'm going to create some texture with a blow dryer, and I'm going to show you how. If you didn't know, you can create the texture with child paint bunch of texture using a blow dryer. It's a very heavy texture. You can create so much, so much texture that way, just using adding the heat. Uh, I'm going to show you how it's very fun and exciting. So let's start this project. I'm going to start with the top and work my way down. By the time I'm done with legs, I will come back and add texture with a blow dryer. You're painting. Blue is painting. Wow, you're so talented. <laughs> A little bit here. There you go. <laughs> this is not a toy. This is my brush. <laughs> Yeah, shake your hair off. <laughs> when you buy furniture from me, you might get some uh, blues hair on there before it used to be Duke's hair, but that's just the part of the look. That's how it's supposed to look because this is what happens every time I paint. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me. What do you need? I need work. Give me back my brush. Uh, let's play with the blow dryer now. Uh, my piece is almost completely dry. Here and there is a little bit wet, it's not a big deal. You don't want to do this on completely wet piece, so wait a little bit to dry. I'm going to uh, apply a little bit of uh, paint. I have a little bit on my brush, and I'm going to go slowly uh, while I'm blow drying with other hand, and I'm going to do that wherever I want the texture. If you miss some areas and you want to repeat the process, you have to wait for that to dry, just blow dry it and then go over and create more, more texture. You can do this just a little bit or a lot. So uh, just play and have fun. I haven't done this in a really long time. So I'm going to kind of play with you guys in front of the camera and you're going to see my process.
So right here, I don't really like how that came out. So I'm just going to go over. Uh, pretty much I like the one here the best and the bottom. So that is normal. I haven't done this in a in really long time. So the more I do, the better it's going to be. Uh, you just don't expect from the get go to be perfect. Just practice. So that's what I'm doing here. Just reminding myself what's the best way to hold the brush and how to apply this. What a blow dryer is doing is allowing you to create a more aggressive texture than just tapping. So wherever you put so much, uh, like when you start and you apply too much, you can just tap it if you don't like it, how it looks. Uh, you just have to play with it. And really you will see what this texture is going to do later on when I uh, apply the second coat. If you apply too much texture and you later on uh, decide that you don't like it, you can just simply sand it and it's not a big deal. It's just chalk paint. So it's easy. Just play with it and have fun. Now I'm going to go around. I'm uh, focusing on the edges of the desk. That's where I want all my texture to be. Uh, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm, I did notice uh, it's probably the hardest to create this texture on around legs, uh, on round surfaces. So there I'm going to tap a little bit more and uh, less dragging my brush. But anyway, I'm just creating a bunch of texture and I'm having fun. And look at this nice texture here. I love it. Now that everything is dry, you can see all this amazing texture. Uh, and I really like it. It's all over the piece. Uh, I kept on going and I kept adding more and more. I focus on the edges. Uh, here, legs have a bunch of texture. Pretty much everything is texturized and that is uh, going to give me such a nice effect that I'm going to try to achieve later on. But now I'm going to mix up some paint for my main color. This is just going to be under. This piece is not going to be brown. So here you can see how I mix. I ran out of paper, so I grab a box, mix some paint here, mix some colors. They might look oh, mm, very much similar, but uh, I know what I love when I get it. And from all these colors that I have here, this is the one I am going to go with. This is the one I like the best. This color I uh, got by mixing uh, Anislon Scandinavian Pink and Antoinette. Let's mix up some colors. First I have to mix this because, as you can see, the paint has been sitting there for a while. So I'm going to pour about half a cup of this color. little bit over but it's not that big of a deal and now I'm not going to, I'm going to uh, slowly uh, pouring Antoinette into this color and let's stir that and see how I like it uh, a little bit more I'm going to go to fill up to one cup. Even though I don't see. So a little bit more of a light pink. So you can see here Antoinette, this is Scandinavian pink and this is the mix that I got. 
So I pretty much mixed kind of one-on-one, -on -one, a little bit extra of Antoinette. I'm going to test it out on the piece and see how I like it. And we will go from there. Oh, I like it. Oh yes, beautiful. Love, 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 love it. So the formula, the recipe is one cup Scandinavian pink and one cup and a little bit of extra Antoinette, pretty much one-on-one. -on -one. Beautiful. Now let's paint. I'm going to paint in every which direction. I'm going to leave the edges on purpose like this. So I'm just going over there with a little bit of paint, kind of dry brushing the edges to have that effect that I want. going over a little bit edges to add a little bit more. Beautiful, very interesting looking. I know not everybody loves texture on the furniture, but I love texture almost more than I love gold. Well, not really, kind of similar. And I'm just going to repeat this on the rest of the piece. Just fuller coverage in the middle of the sections and then less coverage on the edges, more kind of like dry brushing uh, to leave some brown to come through. So I covered pretty much everything with my mix color. Uh, and I got this beautiful texture. One thing I forgot to mention uh, earlier is when you create the texture before you add the second coat if you think you added too much of a texture or you don't like it or you want it less you can simply just sand uh, it lightly using 120 grit sandpaper you don't want to go too rough uh, but it's very easy to tone it down so it's not so aggressive and hard texture uh, so just I forgot to mention that okay so now I'm going to go back to Honfleur and I'm now going to go with a smaller brush and the base color Honfleur and I'm going to uh, add dry brushing around the corners, edges. So I'm going to layer and going back and forth between Honfleur and my peachy color that I mixed. So I'm just going to get a little bit on my brush and just unload that and let's do the door first don't worry if you put too much of this brown you can just go over with a with a peachy color and tone that down so it's just all about the feeling just do as you feel and how much you feel i want to add a little bit more on the corners and then a little bit less in the middle and just keep dry brushing
and then I'm going now to grab this smaller brush because it's going to give me a better control to go around here. So when it comes to the shading and aging, you want to go around areas where a piece will naturally age the most. So that's corners and edges, any uh, piece will not naturally age right here in the middle because that's very rare. It's usual around the hardware, corners, edges, and that's where it looks the most natural. Around hinges. Once I have my uh, horn floor dry brush around the corners, I'm going back with my peachy color, get a little bit on my brush, and I'm going to tone that out, down so it looks more natural. So I'm going right over horn floor toning it down, it will look more organic and more natural. So that's what I'm doing. Because once I put clear wax, the brown is going to look even darker. So it's going to be such a hard contrast. This way, everything is going to be very nice and smooth. And it's going to look like the piece got like that by the old age. And it's really not, it's by me. You can do this as, as little or as, or as much as you like it. But this a little touch is very important because it gives a really nice neutral, mm, more natural look. It's not very neutral, it's natural. We're all done painting this piece and after I gave it some tats, I decided I am going to stencil it. I wanted to use the transfer, but uh, the transfer will look too fresh and I'm not going for a fresh look, I'm going for aged, old look. So let's do some stenciling. I will be using this stencil from Rizan with Prima and I will be using Aniso Anislon Honfleur, the first color that we used on this piece. So I'm just going to start from here. I'm going to tape it. Just to secure my stencil a little bit, I am just going to get some paint on my stenciling brush. And we're going to dab.
Okay, and now we're going to connect it on the other side and do the same. This sponge brush is completely done, over. I'm trying to use it because this is the last one I have at the moment. But it's kind of going hard, so I'm kind of using a brush and then I'm using a sponge. I'm just trying to finish my project. I'm trying really hard here with this stencil. I don't want it to look perfect, I want this dress look. Actually, I'm going to do some things to make this stencil even more aged, so that's why I don't really worry about making it looking perfect and just want to fill up these areas and I'm going to lift it beautiful I really love how this looks uh, all I have to do is now let this side dry a little bit and then I'm going to age it because that's what we are going for I said like a thousand times so far <laughs> While my transfer is drying, I'm going to attach the hardware to make aged look around it by dry brushing some brown color. I didn't know I was going to use this hardware, so I just closed them. Okay, so let's attach the hardware. We're gonna need some washer for this, so I have to bring that. I always have these uh, flat washers on hand, always, 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 because so many times these screws that the hardware comes with, it's too long, so all you have to do is put this little thing and everything is fixed. Okay, using a little detail brush, I'm going to go around the hardware and age it. I'm going to just go lightly and fill it out. Uh, the reason I didn't put stencil on the drawer is because I uh, want to add focus around the hardware, aging hardware around, aging around the hardware. And if I had the stencil, it will clash. It will be too much just on one surface. So that's why I decided to go this way. So I'm just going around. You just start lightly and then you fill that out as you go. Oh, that's too much, but I'm just going to fix that later with a pitchy color so it's not big of a deal. And I'm going to on the other side. This is all I have left from my mixture that I made. Uh, I have a little bit, but that's just enough to give me to do some dry brushing or touching up so I'm just getting a little bit of this color and I'm going to go over brown like I did everywhere else so just lightly it's all about the details details matter And over here we're going to add extra at the end because it's where I messed up. Okay. I gotta go on the other side. I don't know if you can hear some snoring, but if you can, that is my dog, Blue. Also Lea is snoring a little bit. snoring. 
Right now, using my uh, brush that I used earlier and this leftover, I'm going to get a little bit and I'm going to dry brush over the stencil. I wanted to distress it, but I actually changed my mind and I do that quite often, change my mind. I just go as I feel. I'm just dry brushing. You can dry brush in every which direction. And it's giving me a very nice aged look, faded look that I want. So I'm just going to go over everywhere. And then I'm going a little harder around the edges to fade that in, to look more faded. Just a little heavier more of a peach color. Perfect. I'll do that on the other side as well. Nice, nice, nice. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Oh, I love it so much. And I'm not even done yet because I'm going to do more aging and that's not going to be black or brown wax. That is going to be tinted wax. And if you want to know what's tinted wax, then I'm going to show you. Just a little bit more. Okay, so let me tell you about tinted wax. What I'm going to do and what is tinted wax. I'm going first to apply clear wax for protection, which you always have to do, and then uh, I'm going to work section by section. So right after I'm done with clear wax, I'm going to apply tinted wax. Tinted wax is when you create your own um, wax, colored wax. It can be any color you want. So if you don't have black wax, all you have to do is mix some clear wax with black chalk paint and you will create black wax. If you want white, you can do the same or yellow or green or any color you imagine. Uh, I'm going to try and create a rusty looking wax by mixing brown, orange and a little bit of red and hopefully that will give me those uh, rusty uh, tones which I want for this piece. So I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to mix uh, Anislon Honfleur, Burgundy and Barcelona Orange. Here I got a can that is almost done. I just have a little bit left in there. I'm going to add some more, but this is where I'm going to mix the wax. You can do it on the plate or anything, anywhere you have. I like this because I can just close it if I have leftover and I can use it again. That's enough. So let's start adding a little bit of colors. First, let's go with the brown. I'm going with a little bit of brown. Okay, let's add some red and orange. Maybe it's too much and maybe it's not. And let's add a little bit of red. It's really burgundy color, it's not red because rust has more these kind of tones, I think. Maybe I'm wrong. So let's stir all this together now and see what we are going to get. So far it's looking brown. Oh, I guess, I see. We need more red. In this, too much brown. And a little bit of more orange. Okay. That's better. Yeah, we're getting there. Definitely need more orange. Yeah, we got it. We got the rusty tones. 
when it comes to creating rust, it's just all hitting the right tone. Sometimes you have to play to get there. But you can always get there. Look at this. I love it. I love it. This is the color I got. So I really like it. It reminds me of rusty. It has rusty tones definitely to it. Uh, if you like more dark, you can just add more brown. You can play with it. Just do whatever you like. Uh, but now I'm going to apply clear wax and then I'm going to add this to the corners and around the edges. Let's go with the clear wax. Wipe everything that is extra. And now I'm going to play with this wax. Yeah, it's really looking rusty. Wow. It's kind of more orange than rusty. Once you apply it on, there's more rusty tones. I mean, orangey tones. I'm gonna just play with rust and dark. So, to make this darker, I'm just going to add some, I'm going to play with my tinted wax and dark wax. And I think the combination of these two is going to be great what I want it. Perfect. Cada bime pitali, I don't like it. So I didn't like it. <laughs> I just didn't like it. It doesn't look so orange here, but once I put it on the peach color, it looks very orange. And I wanted it to be burnt orange. I didn't want it to be, to be light orange and it's giving me light orange tones. So I'm going to practice behind the camera this formula to come up with the right one because I never tried to create a rusty uh, wax, but I will get it. I will get there. I know myself. I will get there eventually one day and I will share it with you the recipe. But for now, I will just remove that with clear wax, rub it off and I'm just going to stick with the dark wax around the edges because I just didn't like it. If you apply any wax that you don't like, if you do it very quickly, if it's fresh, you can just uh, grab some clear wax, bunch of clear wax and rub and you will remove that tinted wax or brown or dark on any that you don't want it. And that's why it's important to have clear wax under so it doesn't stick to your chalk paint. Uh, and now let's go back to this a dark wax. I'm just going to go over the edges. What I wanted to do with a tinted wax, I'm just going to do with dark. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. I'm going to wipe it a little bit off. I love it. And you don't have to love it. Um, I know some people, like my husband, who is behind the camera, thinks that this looks dirty, but to me, this doesn't look dirty. This looks aged, uh, and I really love it, and I appreciate the contrast that it's bringing, uh, but it's all right. If you don't like dark wax or brown wax, just don't do it. Uh, you will save yourself one step, but I will do it because I really love it. 
It's perfect. It's perfect, perfect, perfect. I love it. I very much like it. And now I can remove the tape. The reason I uh, decided not to paint this because there is not enough space inside. So if you put two coats of paint, you might have a hard time to pull this in or your paint uh, can get scratched and all kinds of things. So if you see that there is not enough space in there, it's better to leave as is than to paint that. This has so much layers. This looks so delicious. I love layers. And we're done with this beautiful secretary desk. I enjoyed every step. I really love creating these old world finishes. Uh, I'm very torn between do I love glamour or old world finishes, but I just love them both equally, even though I do glam more often. Uh, I love the texture, the shading, uh, the raised, uh, the stencil, which ended up going, being a little bit of raised stencil because I was applying so much uh, thick paint on it. I love the hardware, it adds a little bit of gold because I have to add gold in everywhere. The inside is just freshly painted and I decided to keep it simple, just painted and protected without any uh, designs. I really love to take these 80s pieces and make them tam timeless by using some artistic techniques and now this won't go out of style uh, anytime, if you ask me. You're probably gonna have to update the hardware in 20 years. Uh, I really hope you liked this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up, leave a comment below, and subscribe if you haven't already. I will see you next time with a new project and more ideas. Bye, guys.